Hello everyone, and welcome back to Creature Archives. This is Survive, Adapt, Evolve, the series where we explore how creatures from both real life and fantasy might fare in entirely different worlds. Today we will be answering the question, could Komodo dragons survive in the Triassic? The Komodo dragon, Earth's largest living lizard, a venomous ambush predator and a dominant force on the islands it calls home. With powerful jaws and venomous saliva, this reptilian hunter can take down prey much larger than itself. But how would it fare in a world ruled by colossal crocodile-like predators, large herbivores, and the first ever true dinosaurs? Let's find out together in this episode of Creature Archives. Before we can determine whether Komodo dragons could survive in the Triassic, we first need to understand the world they'd be entering. The Triassic period was a time of transformation. Following the devastation of the Permian extinction, the most catastrophic mass extinction in Earth's history, life was beginning to reclaim the planet. But it was a world unlike any we know today. At this time, all of Earth's land masses were fused into a single supercontinent, Pangaea. This created extreme climates across the planet. The interior of Pangaea was a vast arid desert, with scorching summers, frigid winters, and very little rainfall. Only the hardiest life could survive in these inhospitable regions. Closer to the coast, however, the environment was much more dynamic. A highly seasonal monsoon climate brought alternating periods of wet and dry seasons. These coastal regions supported conifer forests, lush river deltas, and the return of large terrestrial herbivores, which in turn attracted formidable predators. And the oceans were just as extreme. Though still recovering from the Permian extinction, the seas were home to large marine reptiles like ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs, and sharks. These apex predators dominated the food chain, preying on fish, ammonites, and other marine life. On land, giant crocodile-like predators such as phytosaurs and rysukians reigned at the top of the food chain. Dinosaurs were only just beginning to rise, mostly small and fast rather than the towering giants that they would later become. So. Could Komodo dragons survive here? To find out, we will evaluate them across four key categories. Habitat adaptability, competition and predation, dietary compatibility, and reproductive success. Each category will be rated out of 10, leading to a final survival score. And finally, we will speculate on how Komodo dragons might evolve over millions of years to thrive in this prehistoric world. Habitat adaptability. In modern times, Komodo dragons live exclusively throughout the islands of Indonesia. They inhabit dry open woodlands, savannas, and tropical forests, relying on their keen sense of smell, patience, and ambush tactics to hunt successfully. But how would they fare in the extreme conditions of the Triassic? The hot, arid interior of Pangaea would likely be a major challenge. Komodo dragons, while tolerant of warm temperatures, would still require access to shade and water. The scorching summers and frigid winters of the Pangaean deserts would push them to their limits, making survival in these regions nearly impossible. However, along the monsoon-fed coastlines and river systems, conditions would be far more suitable. Here lush forests and grasslands with relatively consistent temperatures would provide a pretty stable habitat. In terms of shelter, burrowing and using dense vegetation for cover would be essential strategies. Modern Komodo dragons already dig burrows to regulate their body temperature and avoid harsh conditions, and this behavior would be even more critical in the Triassic. While Komodo dragons would almost certainly be unable to survive in the interior of Pangaea, they would likely fare pretty well in the more temperate and tropical coastal regions. It would still be a bit hotter than they would like, but they should have access to enough shelter and water there. This scores them a habitat adaptability rating of 7 out of 10. Dietary Compatibility Komodo dragons are opportunistic carnivores, feeding on a wide range of prey, from small mammals and birds to large mammals and carrion. Their ambush hunting strategy and strong digestive system make them formidable predators and scavengers. But how would this translate to the Triassic? In the coastal and forested regions of Pangaea, vertebrates to feed on would be plentiful. Lystrosaurus, a stocky herbivorous synapsid, would likely be an easy target for adult Komodo dragons. Much like modern Komodo dragons ambush deer and water buffalo, they could lie in wait near watering holes or well-worn paths, lunging with sudden bursts of speed. Their serrated teeth and venom allow them to incapacitate their prey quickly. Small mammals and arboreal reptiles could also be viable prey, especially for juvenile Komodo dragons. In modern ecosystems, young Komodo dragons often take refuge in trees to avoid being eaten by larger predators and adult Komodo dragons. 
In the Triassic, they would likely exploit a similar niche, feeding on insects, small pterosaurs, and early mammals in the forest canopy. This would give them a stable food source early in life before transitioning to larger prey as they grew. However, the biggest advantage Komodo dragons have is their ability to scavenge. In modern environments, they feast on carrion just as readily as fresh kills, tracking the scent of decaying flesh from miles away. In the Triassic, this would allow them to feed on the remains of large prey killed by apex predators. With their incredibly strong stomach acids, they could digest bone, hide, and even putrid meat, letting them exploit a food source that many other carnivores might avoid. That said, their Triassic diet would face some challenges. Many of the prey species in the Triassic were faster or much larger than the mammals Komodo dragons hunt today. Theropods like Colophysis would be too quick to be a consistent food source, and certain herbivores like Platyosaurus would be far too large. Additionally, seasonal scarcity in Pangaea could be a challenge. During dry seasons, prey could become harder to find. Luckily, Komodo dragons' fantastic smell and ability to digest rotting carrion would help mitigate this issue. Overall, Komodo dragons would have plenty of food options in the Triassic. With a diet ranging from small mammals to scavenge kills, their ability to consume a wide variety of prey, digest tough materials, and survive long periods without food would give them a solid chance at finding food. This scores Komodo dragons a dietary compatibility rating of 8 out of 10. Competition and predation. While Komodo dragons dominate their modern island ecosystems, they are a big fish in a small pond. The Triassic is home to a plethora of apex predators far larger, faster, and better adapted to this world than Komodo dragons. Just for reference, here is a rough size comparison between an adult Phasalosuchus and an adult Komodo dragon. Adult Komodo dragons get to around 10 feet long and 300 pounds. A Phasalosuchus is several times that size at approximately 30 feet long and 2-3 to three tons. So rather than ruling as ambush predators, Komodo dragons would likely spend much of their time avoiding becoming prey. The most immediate and overwhelming threat to Komodo dragons would be the dominant group of predators of the era, Rysukians. They could easily overpower and outrun Komodo dragons. Predators like the previously mentioned Phasalosuchus and Saurosuchus were built for speed, power, and brute force. Unlike Komodo dragons, which rely entirely on ambush tactics, Rysukians were capable of running down their prey. Another major threat would be large theropods like Herosaurus, one of the earliest large meat-eating dinosaurs. Though not as massive as the Rysukians, Herosaurus could grow over 15 feet long and were built for strength and speed. It's likely they hunted alone, using powerful jaws and claws to take down prey. A Komodo dragon caught by any one of these larger predators would have a very low chance of survival. They would likely be too slow to escape, and their venom likely wouldn't be effective against such large, robust attackers. Most could kill them instantly with a crushing bite or strike. Even if they avoided these apex predators, Komodo dragons would still face fierce competition from the era's smaller theropod dinosaurs. Fast and agile hunters like Colophysis would be especially dangerous to juvenile Komodo dragons. Colophysis is believed to have hunted in packs, using speed and numbers to overwhelm smaller prey. Unlike Komodo dragons, which are known to fight and even cannibalize one another, Colophysis thrive through cooperation. A single Komodo dragon trying to defend a kill against a group of them could struggle. The Triassic's combination of massive apex predators and fast coordinated theropods would make survival incredibly difficult for Komodo dragons. Their slow, solo, ambush-based hunting strategy would struggle against the variety of fast and large predators that dominated the Triassic. This scores them a competition and predation rating of 4 out of 10. Reproductive success. Komodo dragons would face significant challenges trying to reproduce in the Triassic. One of the primary obstacles for Komodo dragons is their slow maturation process. In modern times, it can take up to eight years for a Komodo dragon to reach sexual maturity. During this prolonged period, the young dragons would be at high risk of predation and environmental factors. Additionally, Komodo dragons breed only once a year, or sometimes even less frequently in harsher environments, making them highly dependent on stable conditions for successful reproduction. The volatile climate and ecosystems of the Triassic, along with intense competition for resources, would make finding suitable conditions for breeding difficult. This low reproductive rate would put considerable pressure on the population, as recovery from losses would take much longer, limiting overall population growth. If this wasn't bad enough, cannibalism is a well-documented behavior in modern Komodo dragons, with juveniles often falling prey to adult dragons. In the Triassic, the risk of being cannibalized by larger dragons would be heightened, especially during times of food scarcity. Even if juveniles avoided cannibalism by taking to the trees, they would still face numerous threats from other predators. Early pterosaurs and small theropods would target young Komodo dragons, 
This constant threat of predation would make juvenile survival unlikely, with only the most fortunate or quickest individuals making it to maturity. With a long maturation period, low breeding frequency, and high juvenile mortality, the reproductive outlook for Komodo dragons in the Triassic is very grim. Even if they manage to reproduce, the high risk of juvenile cannibalism, predation, and competition would severely limit their ability to sustain a population. Solitary by nature and slow to mature, Komodo dragons would face steep odds in maintaining a viable population in the Triassic environment. This scores them a reproductive success rating of 3 out of 10. Final survival score, 5.5 out of 10. Komodo dragons would just barely manage to get by in the Triassic. Their slow maturation, solitary nature, and high juvenile mortality would make survival difficult, and their low reproductive rate and vulnerability to cannibalism and predation would add further challenges. However, their adaptability and superb scavenging skills could provide just enough resilience to survive. Before we dive into the speculative evolution portion of this video, if you're enjoying so far, be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Speculative Evolution to survive the predator-filled landscapes of the Triassic, some Komodo dragons took to the trees and they decided to stay there, evolving into a smaller, more agile form akin to modern tree monitors. This shift to an arboreal lifestyle would allow them to avoid massive terrestrial predators while carving out a new niche among the canopy-dwelling reptiles and early mammals of the era. This speculative evolution is known as Varanus sylvanus, or the Canopy Dragon. Much smaller than its ancestors, the canopy dragon grows only to 4 to 7 feet in length and weighs between 8 and 18 pounds, an optimal size for tree-dwelling agility. Over generations, its limbs became longer and more flexible, with curved claws designed specifically for gripping rough bark and clinging to branches. Its tail evolved into a strong prehensile appendage used for balance and grip, acting almost like a fifth limb. Powerful hind legs give the canopy dragon the explosive force necessary to leap between tree limbs with ease, while its forelimbs remain dexterous for grabbing small prey and navigating complex canopy terrain. Its jaw structure became more narrow and precise, suited for snatching small reptiles, insects, and mammals hiding in crevices or under leaves. Its eyes have shifted forward, granting binocular vision ideal for accurate depth perception, a critical advantage when ambushing prey from above or judging distances mid-leap. Though smaller, it remains venomous. To compensate for its reduced size and lower physical strength, the canopy dragon developed a faster-acting, more neurotoxic venom that quickly incapacitates prey before it escapes into the trees. By avoiding direct competition with ground-dwelling predators and exploiting an underutilized ecological niche, the canopy dragon would not only survive in the Triassic canopy, it would flourish, becoming one of the dominant small predators of the treetop world. In modern times, Komodo dragons are no strangers to the water often swimming between islands in search of food or territory. In this speculative path, some ancient Komodo populations rejected the chaos of the land, and chose instead to take to the sea. These aquatic descendants, Varanus pelagius, or tidal dragons, have undergone dramatic changes to thrive in the Triassic seas. Tidal dragons grow significantly larger than their terrestrial ancestors, reaching lengths of 35 to 45 feet, and weights of 5,000 to 10,000 pounds, this massive size provides thermal regulation in colder waters, a defense against predators, and the strength needed to overpower marine reptiles and large fish. Over millions of years, their legs have transformed into powerful fin-like flippers, allowing them to cruise the ocean with grace and speed. Their tail has become vertically flattened, much like a crocodile's, offering powerful propulsion. However, despite their aquatic lifestyle, they still rely on land for reproduction, hauling their bulk onto beaches to lay clutches of leathery eggs buried in the sand. Losing the reliance on venom, the tidal dragon has instead evolved a skull more reminiscent of early mosasaurs or crocodiles, with robust jaws and conical teeth designed for gripping and crushing. Their diet would include ammonites, placodonts, ichthyosaurs, and even early sharks. Their sense of smell and vision have evolved to suit the ocean. Salt glands remove excess salt, their nostrils have shifted higher on their snout, and their eyes have adapted to low light conditions, giving them underwater sight. Free from most land-based predators and rivaling even apex marine reptiles in size and strength, the tidal dragon would become the dominant reptilian predator of the Triassic seas, filling the niche mosasaurs would millions of years later. Not all Komodo dragons sought refuge in trees or the ocean. Some decided to fight for dominance on land by growing bigger, meaner, and deadlier. These behemoths, known as Varanus rex, or the Titan Monitor, represents the peak of terrestrial evolution for this lineage. At 25 to 30 feet long and weighing between 2 and 3 tons, the Titan Monitor rivals some of the largest predators of the Triassic. 
Their skull structure has adapted to support larger jaw muscles and a broader gape and their teeth evolved from the conical puncturing shape of modern monitors into blade-like serrated slicing teeth, similar to those of theropods like Giganotosaurus. These teeth allow the Titan monitor to rip massive gashes in thick-skinned prey, causing profuse bleeding. To make each bite count, the Titan monitor retains and enhances the Komodo dragon's infamous venom. Its saliva now contains an even more potent blend of hemotoxins and anticoagulants, ensuring that once bitten, prey suffer rapid blood loss and systemic shock. A few well-placed bites, followed by hours or days of tracking, is often all it takes for a Titan Monitor to bring down massive herbivores like Platyosaurus. The Titan Monitor remains a solitary ambush predator. Its limbs have become thicker and more robust to support its massive frame, while its claws, though no longer for climbing, are ideal for gripping and holding thrashing prey. Its forked tongue, along with a highly developed Jacobson's organ, grants it extraordinary tracking abilities, allowing it to follow wounded animals for miles across dense terrain. Unwilling to waste energy on prolonged chases, it will often steal kills from smaller predators, using its size and aggression to dominate the food chain. In an ecosystem filled with ferocious archosaurs and theropods, the Titan Monitor earns its place not through speed or cooperation, but through power, persistence, and precision. If you enjoyed this episode of Survive, Adapt, Evolve, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Until next time, stay curious, and I'll see you all in the next video.